Welcome to the Enthusiast series at the Whiskey Baron. Today, we've got a very, very special episode coming up. I'm here in conversation with Gordon Dundas, global brand ambassador for Rosebank. We're here to get the inside track on this freshly reopened distillery, only been reopened to the public since June of this year. And we're gonna try also both the new make and some very, very special whiskies as well. Do stay tuned. Gordon. Fantastic, yeah. Welcome to the Enthusiast Series. How are you doing? I'm great. Great to have you here. Really excited about what we're going to talk about. And obviously, yeah, it's been a journey, but great to have this distillery open. I mean, from a shell that had pigeons living inside it, yep. the stills being stolen, yep. to Ian McLeod rebuying the, buying the distillery yep. in 2017, I mean, what a transformation. Tell us a little bit more about it. It's been a, it's been a labor of love for sure. But uh, yeah, I mean, look, I think, um, you know, as a distillery, it's always been a bit of an icon. Um, and I think that's down to those, actually the independent bottlers in the, in the, in the sort of late 90s, 2000s, who really got Rosebank out to those connoisseurs and the connoisseurs understood how important it was. Um, and its style was so unique. And, and let's fast forward to 2016-ish when Leonard drove past and saw the state of the distillery and thought, this could be an opportunity. Um, the thing about Ian McLeod, we come from a broking background. We do all everything in whiskey except up until we bought Glengoyne. Of course, we did everything in whiskey except produce it. We then bought Glengoyne. We bought Tamdu, and Rosebank was was a really nice progression for us. We worked closely with Diageo on the deal, and of course, the Scottish Canals who owned the buildings and the whole thing fell into place in October 2017. Um, and uh, from then on, it's been a, it's taken its time. We've had COVID, we've had, it's a difficult site. Yep. Uh, um, but we, yeah, we were distilling a year ago, so in July, 2023. So the distillery was effectively ready at that point. Um, and then it opened to the public in June this year. So it's been a labor of love, a bit more, quite a bit of budget, but uh, we've got an amazing, an amazing distillery here. I mean, we've had um, a quick wander around this morning so far. There's going to be lots more Rosebank content coming. Um, it's looking absolutely amazing. Um, Stevie and I were in the, uh, in the still house and by the washbacks, both commenting on what a fantastic job yeah. you guys have done. Like, it's so light, airy and modern, but yet respectful yeah. of what's been there and the respectful of the past. It was very much the brief, you know. We're, we're, we're actually in some of the really old buildings. The only bit that's been retained, we've retained the chimney, which we obviously wanted to, integral to the locals here. Um, and we're in the old... Uh, warehousing and, and uh, sort of side on the canal side of the distillery. These buildings we were always going to retain, but of course, when we started to peel them back in 2018, 2019, it wasn't, there was a few more issues than we thought and that added cost. And But it's been worth it. You know, we're now here at the end. Uh, we've got a brilliant facility to entertain guests and we've got great tours going on today and every day. And it's, it's just a, you know, not everybody knows the legacy of Rosebank, you know, yeah. but it's going to be a relevant whiskey to the modern, the modern consumer when we bring out our new whiskey, which could be oh, whenever. Yeah, it's also. Um, I mean, we'll, we'll maybe move on to the new make in a second. It's also quite a unique spirit as well. So mm. triple distilled, but also with worm tubs yeah. as well. That's unique in the Scotch whiskey industry, right? Absolutely. I mean, some would say it's mad. Um, I mean, if you think of worm tub distilleries there's probably 20 or so 10 i think are about 10 are from diageo i mean diageo yeah. like a worm tub um but i mean even if you drive up to Speyside, you go past dalwini worm tubs yeah. uh ballandalach worm tubs um more like these kind of distilleries they generally have uh i mean my big example would be craig ellicky has that meaty character has that you know or klein leash you know they have that sort of style that's you know, worm tubs tend to deliver a bit more sulfur, a little bit more of that sort of style into a whiskey. So why would you triple distill, which promotes a light style of, of spirit, letting those still, stills do that work and then put it through worm tub condensers? Well, Rosebank was always a bit of an outlier. And I think you've got to remember the history. They were selling Rosebank to blenders. So what were blenders looking for? They wanted a malt that hung around a little bit more because mm. 
Rose Bank was always a top dresser. It was the cream on the top of a blend and never used in huge quantities. So that worm tub probably just gave it a little bit more of a staying power within a blend. And, uh, you know, there's a whole load of other reasons potentially. But uh, when we rebuilt the story, we wanted the same shape stills. So we got the same shape stills, made them slightly bigger, exactly the same shape. So we had to put in worm tubs. And uh, it's been a real journey for Malcolm, our distillery manager, with the new make spirit. But when we come to try it, it's fabulous. Really, really good. And sells very well in the shop, I have to say. <laughs> Yeah, so we'll, we'll move on to that in a second. I think, again, one of the other things, you know, that's really impressed me, like you said, the, the stills, obviously, gone back to the original designs, you know, the re refurbished the original Bobby Mill as we well, did, somehow yeah. still yeah. kind of, yeah. that hadn't been stolen at least. Abs well, no, it wasn't, and pretty much everything else was, but uh, that's a 1936 Bobby Mill from Port Ellen, actually. Okay, wow. Uh, so, um, from our friends over in Isla, and uh, uh, yeah, totally refurbished by Ronnie Lee, who is Mr... Bobby slash Porteous Mill refurbishing man. Um, and works a treat. I mean, brilliant. It's the only bit of remaining, only bit of original equipment from the distillery. Amazing. Um, should we move on and yes. try the, the yeah. new make? So what we have here, new make spirit, triple distilled, off the still strength, 77% alcohol. Wow, okay. So most distilleries in Scotland, if you double distill, they're around about, let's say, 70, you know? Um, so that triple distillation takes us higher, lower than one of our friends from down the road, Ockentoshin, which is about 81. Yeah. So 77% alcohol. And um, what I love about this is we've reduced this to 63.5, which is filling strength. But when you nose it, it doesn't nose of 63.5%. I mean, completely the opposite and in the best possible way yeah. there is zero nose prickle on that whatsoever yeah. i mean if if i went into that totally blind i would you know maybe say even as, as low as high 40s or mm. kind of low 50s yeah no it's lovely and um you know i i, I will add water to see how this changes but mm. you know 63.5 is still as we know very strong but as you say there's a fruitiness to it there's a greenness to it have a little try at this You could drink that. You That's, could actually drink that the way it is. I imagine when Jake comes along later, he might end up with a little bit of eau de rosebank as his uh, <laughs> cologne for the day. But um, that's what we're looking for. Now, the one thing we didn't have is we didn't have any original new make. Diageo were very helpful with their wonderful archive yep. uh, up in Men's Street, but they didn't have any new make. Right. So all we really had was the whiskies. Yep. And immense talent within the Ian McLeod distilling group to, to get yeah. to where we wanted to. Malcolm's done a fabulous job and he's tweaked it. He's changed it. He's, yeah. And uh, when you come to see the tour, the middle still, the really tall middle still is where a lot of that has the flow rates, the, the, the way he heats it, the way he's cha has changed. And so it has so okay. So that was going to be one of my questions, like the kind of the, the recipe in mm. terms of your fermentation times. Yeah you know, yeast types, et cetera. Did Diageo, were they able to hand that over? Did they have that knowledge? We don't retained? have really much of that. And look, you know, we've got the same shape stills, but actually if you think of think of everything, yeast have changed. Yeah. Barley's Barley changed. changed if, yeah. I reckon if you analyze water between now and 30 years ago, there'll be a difference in the water. So I think if you look at that, there's an element of this is not an exact copy. It's not going to be exactly the same so if you were to drink a 12 year old rosebank from us in yep. 11 years time and compare it to a flora and fauna they will be absolutely similar yeah they're not gonna be identical yeah no way are they gonna be identical but there's a reason we've used the same shape stills there's a reason we've used worm tub condensers and i think we're tasting it and you can see where this is going to go yeah um and that's the point. I'm going to add some water to it just to see I, how that changes. I will in a second as well. It's uh, it's really it's quite it's quite juicy. Um, it's really juicy. It's um, it's mouth watering on the palate. Um, there's definitely floral hints there, a bit jasmine. Um, oh, it's just become very floral there. Yeah, maybe a little bit of sandalwood. And with the fruitiness, it's quite interesting. I'm kind of um, another sip, but I'm maybe going to say kind of even like something like a bit of kiwi. Mm -hmm. There's a greenness, like gooseberry, or there's a mm. greenness to it. Mm. Lovely. 
And I think, you know, you then look at that and you think putting that into, let's talk a bit about the maturation, putting that into not big first fill casts. This is a delicate spirit. Rosebank was always refill. Yeah. So arguably, and I don't know if you can come up with another whiskey that is more spirit forward than this. Now, the only thing I would say is if you look at something like Octomore that's heavily peated, you could say that's very spirit forward. My point would be, you know, we don't use peat, but it's a very, it's always been a spirit forward whiskey. Yeah. So Rosebank's not defined by casks or great wood or spirit and wood. It's defined by spirit and how that spirit changes over uh, time from that triple distilled worm tub setup. Yeah. I, I, well, I mean, I will obviously be going on and trying a little yeah. bit of Rosebank yeah, in a exactly. second. Um, well, older Rosebank. Uh, obviously, yes. we tried some new yes. Rosebank, not, not whiskey yet. Um, just before we do, Tell us a little bit about then the, the new mix. It's only available at the distillery. It is only bottles. available at the distillery. We sell, it's very popular. Um, I think for us, let's be, let's be honest, you know, buying a bottle of Rosebank whiskey, it's not, the, you know, it's really, really limited and it is not the most, it, there are cheaper whiskies out there, let's be honest. So we have a 25 pound tour, which people can come and try the new make. They get a Glengoyne, they get a Tamdu. Mm -hmm. They get the whole Ian McLeod experience, but they get to understand Rosebank. And so that's a great gift to go home with. Oh, I've been to Rosebank. I've got my bottle of New Make Spirit, and I've, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy about that. Um, I think we then have a tour that goes slightly at a higher level, allows you to taste one Rosebank, um, and then you can continue on up from there. But, I mean, I think we wanted to give people the opportunity to take a bit of Rosebank home. Yeah. And we don't have any whiskey that is, you know, not really, really exclusive. So to produce a lovely little bottle of New Make Spirit uh, for people to take home and, and really remember their day and then maybe come back in yeah. however long it may be, six or seven years, and see how that New Make Spirit has become a whiskey. No, that's that's great. I, um, I wasn't sure whether you guys were going to be doing that or not, but it, I think it's really good and I think it's quite important that you that you do that as I said mm. people have got that opportunity from exactly. Memento plus also if everyone is trying it as part of a tour to probably realize it's pretty good yeah and uh, the feedback on it you know from from the public as well as we've had you know some other whiskey folk through here yeah feedback so positive on the new make spirit so um, I'm really hopeful about the whiskey I've we've had whiskey in a cast now for a year yep uh, and actually had a little taste of it recently and uh, I think it's it's progressing the way we want it to. So um, that's really exciting. So no, it's 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 we're, we're on a journey. We're yeah. still on a journey. We've opened the distillery. We're still on a whiskey journey now. I guess it's 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 probably too early to even ask. You know, do you have any idea of what the plans yeah. are? I, I'm assuming that you know there's no need to be saying here's some three year old. It's not going to be three years in a day. I'll tell you why. One of the reasons, of course, is we we've matured predominantly in refill. We're refilling casks that we've got from Tamdu and Glengoyne because there's not a lot of uh, Rosebank refills. Yep. Um, and we want that spirit to be the, the star. That's going to take a little bit longer maturation. You're getting less, less um, interaction from the cask. Um, and that spirit, how it changes as A, a bit of air gets in there, as well as just you know getting those lighter flavors from the cask. I think, uh, I think we're probably looking at a, a seven to eight year old. Okay. But that's me. I mean, it, I, I don't think it'll be much younger than that. All right, cool. Obviously, there are at least still some older stocks. There now. are. Not very much. Not though, much. Right? Not much. No, we, we, as part of the deal, we acquired all the remaining casks. Um, and so we have them spread around. We don't really have a big warehouse here. We have a, some of them, not many of those casks are here. Some are at Glengoyne, some are at Tamdu. Spread the spread the risk, as it were. Spread the spread the the maturation sites. But um, yeah, we have everything. All the whiskies we have are between 1989 and 1993. That is it. Nothing outside of that. That's the remaining stock. Yep. And it closed. Obviously, its last cask was filled. I think in June 1993. Yeah, I was saying, and you basically restarted distilling, kind of 30 years, kind of almost to the day, right? Almost to the day. Yeah. All filled a cask in July 1993, so really, really close. So yeah. 30 years today, yeah, that's yeah. It was, it was quite a poignant day. That I think yeah. Leonard Leonard was pretty emotional that day when we filled that first cask. Brilliant. 
So I guess so, let's yeah. uh, let's move on. We've got so um, we're gonna yeah the first whiskey we've got here that's a thirty two year old. So this is the we, we've we've released three whiskies. We've released a, a thirty year old that yep. came out in about I'm trying to remember my dates now, but probably about twenty twenty one. Yeah. We then released a thirty one year old, and this is the final release of that series. So that's the 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 third release of that series from the legacy stocks, all the stocks that we have. Um, and so this 32-year-old is um, bottled in 2023, 47.6% alcohol. This is absolutely gorgeous. The one thing about Rosebank is it has a style. Yep. We ha the only casts we have are the casts we have. We're not re-racking casts. We're not doing a lot of that. We want people to understand that Rosebank style. So this 32-year-old, we've used... Obviously, all refill casks. There's no first fill in here, hence that beautiful light color. Um, and there's a bit of American oak in here. Um, and I think that's what's really interesting about this whiskey. So should we have a try? I think it would be rude not to. Um, before I do, though, I just want to highlight these um, frankly incredible glasses that you guys have had created. Uh, yeah. These. Um, let me just put it towards the camera. Gorgeous. Um, amazing engraving on them as well and beautiful yeah. for nosing as well they are I and mean, i've got a big nose they are beautiful for <laughs> nosing um so what do you expect from rosebank well we think of that fruity character that fruity style that we've produced through and was produced through clear warts and night great fermentation and distillation in three stills and then worm tubs and we have a you know we don't know what the spirit strength was back then. I'm sure it was probably around about the same. 77, reduced to 63.5. But what I love about Rosebank is 32 years old, it's the vibrancy that comes through. Yeah. It's vibrant. It's alive. It's, 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 uh, I don't know the word to describe it, but it's, you know, when we taste some 30 year old whiskies, they can feel quite, you know, even just very different. If you were to yeah. compare this to a Glengoyne 30, big sherry cast, much more sherry cast, much more of that Dunnage style warehouse. Yeah. This is more like, which is beautiful. Don't get me wrong. I know you love that style too. Yeah, absolutely. But this is the antithesis, the opposite. Yeah. This is standing in a summer's meadow, so standing in a summer's day, you know, nosing a beautiful whiskey. Yeah, it is... Um Delicate yet vibrant, right? Yeah, At the yeah. same time, it's um, it's not shy. It's not pulling any punches, no, no. despite being so much lighter. Um, on the nose, for me, it's really getting um, almost like that old bottle effect that you can get on a bunch of kind of 60s and 70s distillate, mm -hmm. which is incredible that it's still continuing and it's kind of something that was distilled either late 80s or early 90s. Yeah, yeah. Not something you of, often see of whiskies of that age. No, and I think you know. I think when you have when you nose a rosebank of of any age, actually, it's very much on the flora and fauna as well. So there's this array of not just fruits, and it's not just it's not just you know. There's a hint of that tropical element, but there's also there's also body to it. Mm. You know, on the nose, there's also a structure that's very obvious, and and it has this beautiful sort of English is a poise to it I think that's the word I'm looking to yeah it's got a poise to it I love the nose but I'm gonna little taste it <laughs> why why uh, yeah I think you just saw two very big smiles on camera then at that point in time that's yeah quite something the right? mouthfeel is amazing the creaminess the 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 finish, the the length, the the juiciness. I'm getting yeah. that. It's making me juicy, you know. Absolutely. You know, we were talking. You know, sometimes with a little bit more. If you look at a European oak type cask, you get that little bit of dryness. This is juicy. This is yeah. making me want to drink more of it. It's oh. the, the creaminess. I absolutely, get. It's very much uh, a single cream, mm -hmm. um, and it's just wonderfully silky on the tongue in terms of the mouth oh, texture yeah, and coating. Um, often when you get a really mouth coating whiskey, it's, it's quite viscous and thick. And this feels so much lighter, but yet has that same effect, which is... And that, I think, is one tubs. Yeah. 
That's what worm tubs do. I think it makes this whiskey hang around that little bit more. Yes, you've got complexity from age and complexity from how the air has affected the whiskey, but those worm tubs give this whiskey a little bit more staying power, arguably, just to stay in that in that area, I think for sure, is absolutely lovely. Yeah, it's... Um, oh, right. some, some of the words I used to describe it, I think people you know, might almost take negatively, which is quite the wrong thing to have because it's, you know, the spice is very gentle. Yes, there is, there's a little bit, but gentle, yeah, absolutely. Um, and, but it's, it's quite the opposite because it's, it's remarkable how well balanced yeah. it is and how for a lighter whiskey how powerful the flavors are mm -hmm. and how long lasting so, you know sitting here waffling on no but everything's it. in check isn't it Every, everything's you know there's different elements to this but nothing is overpowering anything else the alcohol's very much in the background yeah that spice is really pleasant i would just call it more like a tingle yep um the finish is just fabulous I and I'm still tasting at the front of the palate when I drank it. So, exactly, finished. You know, still going on even yeah. even now. Um, you know, just a wonderful kind of um, sweet kind of old ancient oak. Yeah, it's absolutely gorgeous. I mean, you look at the look. I'll be honest. When you look at some of those casks that we had a look at, you know, 1989. You know, old casks. You think, look at what comes out of them. There's this ridiculously fresh vibrant whiskies if you look at the cast you would think crikey that's going to come out it's like you know over woody yeah. you know not at all and that just shows you even back then you know when these were filled there was a style that's what they wanted to produce and they knew it and yeah. they knew they had something different which is why rosebank now is considered what it is yeah um and i had the opportunity to work with michael jackson uh, when I worked at Whiskey Magazine many years ago. And I learned more from him in half an hour, well, sorry, in about three hours than I ever learned from anybody else in whiskey. And I remember him, we tasted a Rosebank actually, and I think it might even have been a Dunvegan Rosebank, which mm. was probably one from Ian McLeod, bizarrely. And he said, this is lowland whiskey. Yeah. He went, this is what it's about. And, and, um, and, and he explained it to me, and I, I was like, yeah, okay, I get it. I'm, I'm, I'm loving it. And um, he thought it was a grievous loss that it was closed. So uh, to Michael, who, you know, he's not been with us for a while, but no. I'm sure he'll be looking down going, great to see this distillery being reborn, because I think he wanted to see it. So Yeah, 100%. But this is, this, is, this is fabulous, fabulous whiskey. Absolutely gorgeous. And we want to pay homage to this style of whiskey in 31 years with our new Rosebank, yeah. you know? This is obviously a very special dram. You mentioned, obviously, there are a number of different tours that are available here. Yeah. Um, is this one of the whiskies that you can potentially try if you come on a tour here at Rosebank? Absolutely. So, as I said, we have a 30, a 31, and a 32. It is one of the whiskies that you can try. What we have is we have a 25-pound tour, which I said, yeah. uh, which you don't, unfortunately, get a Rosebank, but you get some great whiskies and the full story, and you get to try the new make. The next tour is the... Uh, 95 pound tour which is the um which for me is a great ability to try a rosebank try some glengoyne some tamdu some new make you get that full in-depth understanding of why rosebank tastes the way it does um and i think you taste the 31 actually on that tour yep the third tour we have a third tour you taste three rosebanks you'll taste flora and fauna which is an iconic rosebank you'll be here for three hours i think and you'll you'll taste the uh, 31, and then you get the opportunity to select your final whiskey that you want to taste. So we have single casks, which we released. We also have what we're about to try next, or, for example, the 30, the 32. 32. So, Amazing. So, yes, it's it, there's something for everybody. Um, and one of the things that's really important to get across with Rosebank is how important the area is. We are all about Falkirk. We are all about what, what Rosebank meant to Falkirk, when yeah. you look into the history of it at all, this distillery was part of the community. The chimney, everything. Everybody knew Rosebank. Meet you by the chimney. So they were distraught with what happened in the 90s and all the way through. So one of the things we've done really well is to continue to engage with this community because, yes, we've got expensive whiskies, but that doesn't mean it's not, not for Falkirk. 
And so having tours at £25, people can come and try it, come and people can walk through the story without even entering it. Yeah. It's all about how important this is, this building, this brand is to Falkirk the place. So that's been a real driver for us. And we've done some open days for the local community who've come wandering through here and they've all been blown away by it. We've had people who used to work here who've come back and the emotion, the the uh, the proud, they're so proud to see it being being reborn. So Amazing. it really, in, on so many levels, opening something with a distillery like this with the legacy it has, has been really, really wow, eye-opening. Yeah. Really Incredible. eye-opening. Yeah. Um, I guess talking of that kind of pride and everything else, well, mm. you know, also for the Rosebank fans, mm. tell us a little bit about this 33-year-old. Wow. Well, yeah, so this is the oldest Rosebank we've ever produced. Uh, this one is only available from the distillery. Um, it is one of 650 bottles. Um, and it's a little different. We've used a little bit of different casks in this makeup, a smaller batch, um, and it's a sensational whiskey. You can, you can, uh, you can select a tour that you can try this on. Um, we've had huge uh, excitement about it, and for me, I think it might be the it might be my favourite. Not because it's oldest, just because it's a little, it's a little different. Okay. A little, so let's see if we can pick up a little bit of that difference. But yeah, bottled at forty seven point six. Beautiful distillery uh, bottling, and uh, come and have a look if you're here for a tour. <sighs> now, it's different. Yeah, absolutely. Now I'm now trying to describe why it's different. Obviously, a different selection of casks, but there's a slightly richer note running through this. Now the colours are fairly similar. It is an element darker. Yes, absolutely. So, um, I think we've probably got, and I'm guessing, don't know, I haven't broken it down, but probably got a little bit of European oak in here in this refill. But I love that nose. Similar, exactly the same strength, one year older. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, absolutely. The kind of, some of that kind of fruity, floral, kind of freshness and old bottle <sighs> effect has morphed just into a kind of slightly more gentle, kind of rancio yeah, kind of note on it. Absolutely, yeah. There's a slight element of potentially really lightly stewed fruits, mm. but nothing too strong. There's still that, what we saw in the 32, what, 32, what we see in, you know, there's still that spirit character forward. This just has a different profile on the nose. It's just, it's just tingling slightly differently, although exactly the same strength. Just a little bit richer. Yeah, 100%. So what I find with this is that sweetness has moved a little bit back in the palate. It's not quite at the front anymore. Yeah. The tingle that we had is really minimized now. It's less tingle than we had in the 32, which was beautiful. It's mouth coating, but in a slightly different way. It seems an, a little node thicker. Yes, 100%. Um, just ever so slightly heavier whilst retaining some of that lightness. Um, and, you know, talking of kind of old school, like very old school whiskey, the palette, which maybe didn't have quite the same old school vibe as the nose of the 32, significantly more. So yeah. it tastes like whiskey of a different age. That's gorgeous. This is proper kind of bygone era. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I advance. mean, I think it's hard to Think of a whiskey that's similar to this in terms of its style. I mean, you, you know, it, it's 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 mind blowing in a way. It, it, I don't think I've ever, yeah, I'm I'm I can see why I think this is my favourite. I just feel it's got it's just got that. It's just giving you a you get a little note of chocolate at times. Yeah, a little note of just a little like plums and a, but there's this overriding. Still, this vibrancy as well. There's, it's just, it's, it's a, it's like it's a month later. It's like if that was July, we're now in August with this. Do you know, it's a little bit, yeah. slightly more autumnal. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. It, it, you know, this is, um, it's a touch more um, decadent. Um, yeah. 
and the as I said the the richness to it 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 kind of it's a little bit um, kind of plumper and fattier with that yeah. thickness the kind of creaminess has started to move into yeah. that kind of double cream oh that is amazing yeah I'm loving that but I mean you know the key thing about rose banks you're never going to get massive diversity because we only have the cast we have yeah and we don't want to be re-racking cast because it's such a delicate spirit we want them to shine we want that to shine because it's an amazing whiskey. So, you know, you're not going to see big color differences in these age range. They're all because you only have what you have. We only yep. have what we have. So, um, you know, and some of the casks were empty. And this is what I love about the, the whiskey business. You know, you get it some empty casks and it's like, well, that one was empty. Your relationship with, the, you know, the people, oh, I'll send you some other stuff. You know, it's all, yeah. that's the way this industry works. It's amazing. Um, some of the casks are, Utterly amazing. Some are never. Some are not quite so good. Yeah. Um, but that's the nature of the beast, and that's why you, why you have brilliant blenders to produce great whiskey. But this is, I think, because it's such a small release of six, you know only six hundred and fifty bottles, they've managed to produce something that for me is, why? I mean, there's no rose bank that I've tasted from any of these ranges that are not why, but that's just why with a slightly bigger W. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> I, I couldn't agree more. Um, so, I mean, again, I guess it's a tough choice if you come on one of the tours, whether you choose the 32 or the 33. I think maybe Gordon and I are both leaning towards the, the 33. So, like you said, 650 bottles, only available at the distillery. Mm -hmm. How much is this going to set you back when you have a visit? It's a good good point. It's um, uh, I'm trying to remember the price now. I think it's about £3,200. Okay. For a very limited bottle of whiskey, which will never be seen again. So if you're coming and you get to taste it, it you will take home a l proper piece of lowland whiskey history. I, uh, I genuinely think this is probably one of the best whiskeys that I've ever tried. I would agree. I have had, I've drunk some great whiskeys in my time. I'm very lucky to have worked in this industry for 20 years plus. Um, I've drunk some amazing whiskies. This is in my top five, I think. So yeah, I'd agree with you. Cheers, Slange. Slange. Thank you so much for having us. Not at all. Um, it's fantastic to see Rosebank open again. Um, the team at Ian McLeod have done an amazing job. Um, it's a blend of both old and new that I think genuinely you can't see anywhere else. Um, as Gordon said, I think, you know, regardless of your budget, there's a tour for anyone. Um, obviously, if you want to kind of go home with a, a set of older releases, you do need some deeper pockets. But in the case of this 33-year-old, it is an experience to be savoured and, and, and tried if you, if you possibly can. Um, again, thank you so much for having us. Not at us. all. It's been great to have you. That's been another episode of the Enthusiast series. I feel um, incredibly privileged to have been here and tried some of these amazing whiskies. Um, the blend of old and new here at Rosebank is something I think you genuinely can't see anywhere else in, uh, in Scotch whiskey. And regardless of your budget, I think there is something for everyone to be seen here. So do get yourself down to Falkirk. Thank you so much for watching and uh, we'll see you again very soon. Slanche.